Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I'm Dr. Derek De Silva. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm here with Dr. Eugene Shippen. He is from Reading, Pennsylvania. Family doctor, been in practice for many years, has tons of experience, and he also has a concentration in endocrinology. He's also the author of the book, The Testosterone Syndrome, that was published in 1998. Dr. Shippen, thank you very much for joining me once again. I want to talk a little bit about estrogen in men. We don't usually put the word estrogen and men together. What's the relationship? Well, uh, it's almost biblical. All estrogens come from testosterone or androgens. So the female comes from the male. It's kind of interesting. Uh, we tend to think in terms of testosterone in male, estrogen in female, and neither one is very important in the other sex. And when, when we look at the endocrinology of both sexes, testosterone very important in women's health, their bone health, their uh, mental health and libido. And for men, estrogen becomes deficient when testosterone becomes deficient. And estrogen is cardioprotective, brain protective. Uh, it affects uh, our sexuality. Uh, so estrogen was forgotten because everyone is focusing on testosterone. They still today, if you go to an endocrinologist, he won't even measure estrogen. So in deficiency, estrogen is very bad. But then when you give testosterone, if you give excess or if men have obesity or conditions where they convert more estrogen, estrogen then can become suppressive to libido and sexual function at the higher end. It can also result in increased weight. Uh, and some other adverse effects, but it, it's more on the high side, but it definitely affects sexuality. Do, are this, do the symptoms vary if they're too low, if estrogen is too low? And we're talking about estradiol. Uh, estradiol is primary. Estradiol is primarily. Primary estrogen. It, it can, it can, when we look at this, what do we have when estradiol or estrogen is too low in men and when it's too high? Is, is it the same, different? How does that work? Well, they're both tied together because if you have testosterone deficiency, you, ha you have relative estrogen deficiency. If you're obese, sometimes obese people can produce more estrogen and you know that many of the obese men have uh, some uh, gynecomastia as part of, of their estrogen dominance relative to testosterone. Uh, so uh, estrogen, uh, it's not as though it has specific, specific symptoms. It's integrated with testosterone so that both testosterone in the optimal range and estrogen in the optimal range has the best in sexuality, the best in cardiovascular health, the best in brain protection, the best in bone protection. Mm -hmm. So they really go together. It's, it's when you either have genetic problems that, that result in excess estrogen or you give inappropriate doses of testosterone that are converted into excess estrogen. Do you have a range that you like for estradiol? That's where the individualization uh, came. In my book, I wrote that the ratio between estrogen and testosterone, you should be a one to five ratio or something. I, I would take that out because I've found the range is maybe tenfold different. Some men with high estrogen do fine. Uh, some men with fairly low estrogen do fine. So it's very individualized. And, right. And Talk to me about adrenal androgens. What are they? How do they work? Adre the primary adrenal, uh, primary adrenal hormone is cortisone. It's, without cortisone, we die. So it is the most important of the uh, cortical hormones. Adrenal also produces adrenaline and so on. But of the steroid hormones, cortisone is critical for health. But along the way to cortisone are precursor hormones called pregnenolone, and that can be converted into other hormones uh, that are metabolites called DHEA and so on. As we age, when you do uh, age-related decline in adrenal androgens, they go down faster than, than testosterone. The most important thing with the adrenal precursors is that they are the hormones that go to the brain and the brain uses those hormones to make its own estrogen and testosterone. We didn't realize that the brain can make all of the hormones that we can make peripherally. The brain can make its own insulin. I didn't know that before. Uh, it, makes it, it can make testosterone and estrogen and 
these other things. So in dementia, we will see very low levels of the adrenal androgens and pregnenolone, very, very low. So if people are not paying attention to measuring the adrenal precursors uh, and adding those back in as part of hormone replacement, total hormone replacement, they're missing a great protector of the brain. Mm -hmm. And so much of the dementia is partly due to the sex hormones, but greatly uh, the other hormones play a role. So all of these factors need to be looked at, and I think a lot of people will just look at one thing that they're interested in and forget the rest of the picture. Thank you. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, you had one more thing to say? I just say a lot of people doing testosterone say they're andrologists. I say don't be an andrologist. Be an endocrinologist. Be a, a total hormone person. Because, you know, and that brings up a really good point. Hormones don't work individually. Hormones work in a symphony. That's what I have found. Uh, ab absolutely the word I would use. They, they really, they all have to be balanced because if one thing gets thrown off, and you gave the perfect example of, of, of aromatization, right, that giving too much testosterone converting to estrogen, if that gets thrown off, everything else is going to get thrown off. The other part of the symphony is the circadian rhythm. And as we age, the circadian rhythm gets thrown off. And what throws that off? Well, I'll tell you what, sleep disturbances are foreign, foremost with sleep apnea and sleep disturbances. Any people with sleep apnea or shift work or whatever throwing the circadian rhythm off, if, you're get your sim if you get your hormones fluctuating out of their normal pattern, you get dyssynchrony and ill health. I.e. things like melatonin. Yes, absolutely. Melatonin has many brain protective effects. All the data that was written on melatonin was written 20 years ago, and it was brain protective. It was not just a sleep hormone. Right, right. Excellent information. Thank you, very, thank you for playing a great uh, symphony, because that's what you've been doing for all these years, and I thank you very much well, for joining I've enjoyed, us. I've enjoyed the, the trip. Very good. Well, folks, thank you for joining us. Uh, Dr. Eugene Shippen is his name. Once again, a family medical doctor from Reading, Pennsylvania. He's also the author of the book, The Testosterone Syndrome. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Derek De Silva, and may you always be blessed with good health.